Well, God bless you, my beloved. This is Minister S. N. Crockett, Jr. with the truth of the gospel. We're coming to you the 17th of August, 2023, with our uh, encouragement for today. Let's come from Romans chapter 6, the epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Roman Christians. And he tells about how man is a sinner and that uh, man needs salvation. Then he says how man can be saved which is justification, which means to be in right standing with God, not based on our own merit. And then in chapter 6, he says, now you've got justification. You, you're just in God's sight because of who Jesus is, not because of who we are. But then he says in chapter 6, now sanctification has to take place. And that's a daily walk with the Lord. Sanctification, allowing the Holy Spirit in us to lead us and guide us and to help us to make decisions concerning uh, the lives that we live, etc. And Paul says in Romans 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Remember, grace is G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches, <clears throat> excuse me, at Christ's expense. And so the apostle says we should not abuse the grace of God. He says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? therein. We have been made dead to sin by the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We, we've been baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, into the church, if you will. All right. And so he says here, if you read this whole chapter, he's saying, look, we cannot live the life that we lived before we got saved because there has to be evidence that the Holy Spirit is within us. There has to be evidence that uh, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and that Jesus is a reality in our lives. We cannot. So though I'm, I'm, a, I'm a related to those of us who believe in eternal security or what some of you call OSAS. Those who complain about that say that, we're, that we use that doctrine as a license to sin. No, some may and God will deal with them. But those of us who are mature and responsible know that we do not we, we do not use eternal security or OSAS as a license to sin, but as a license to appreciate what Jesus has done for us to love and to obey. And so he says here in Romans that we've been planted together in the likeness of Jesus' death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So if our old man is crucified with him, uh, that old man can't do the things uh, the, the new man can't do the things that the old man used to do. Let me give you an example. If you were to walk into a funeral home and walk up to a body in a casket, no matter what you did or said to that body, the body wouldn't respond. You could, you could insult that body and say all things, all kinds of things. Of course, you wouldn't do this, but you could say all kinds of things about that body's uh, mother and father and about that body, etc., and, and, and just, just lay insult after insult upon that body, but that body is dead and would not respond. And so likewise, we have to be the same way. I know it's not easy, and you see things that you want, or you see someone you want, etc. but if we're gonna live for Jesus, the Bible says we have to abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against our soul. So, of course, our mind. There's a warfare in our mind that the enemy brings against our mind, but the more we uh, get into God's word and prayer and, and develop that relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the more victorious we will be in that warfare. He that is dead is freed from sin, Romans 6 and 7. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. And because death hath no more dominion over our Lord Jesus Christ, it should no longer have dominion over us. So if we do occasionally sin, et cetera, stumble and bumble, then the Bible says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, and he is the propitiation, or he is the satisfaction. God is satisfied the sin issue has been settled because of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's the propitiation for our sins, and not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world, John told uh, his flock. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. If, if sin is still ruling in your mortal body, that's an indicator that you're either very carnal or that you never did uh, enter into that, uh, um, that, that, that uh, immutable covenant with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is called uh, salvation, the church, the new covenant, the, the New Testament, you know, terms like that. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, 
But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin had dominion on, because of the law, because the law exposed sin, right? The law exposed the weakness of the flesh. And so Paul is saying to these Roman Christians, most were Gentile, but some were Jewish. He's saying, you're not under the law. You're under grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. But he's saying, don't abuse that grace. He says in verse 16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Whoever you obey, that's your master. That, in essence, that's what he's saying. Whoever you obey, that's your master. Uh, I remember going with my wife to uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina many years ago. And, you know, you go on the historic tour and all that. And we, and we, and we saw some slave quarters going back to the 19th century, et cetera, the, the slave quarters. But the slave quarters were empty. The slave quarters were empty because the slaves are no longer there. Well, the slave quarters where you used to dwell, where the enemy, Satan, uh, had dominion over you, those slave quarters need to be empty because you're no longer a slave of sin. But you are, a, in essence, a slave of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not only are you a slave, but you are to inherit the eternal kingdom. So that makes you a son and a daughter of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. Did you hear that? You were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. That's why doctrine is important. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. The Bible says we've been made free from the power of sin, the penalty of sin, and one day we shall be freed from the very presence of sin. Being then made free from sin, uh, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your, your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were servants of sin, remember the slave quarters? When you were on the plantation, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? That's the old lifestyle. For the end of those things is death eternal death, not just physical death, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life or the result of this holiness, this relationship with Jesus through the immutable covenant of the New Testament, the end will be everlasting life. And then Romans 6 and 23 brings it home for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is a gift. We can't boast in, uh, we can't boast that we did anything to earn it and all that. You know, a lot of people are trying to teach works-based salvation, earn your salvation. No, the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ and only through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I just wanted to encourage you uh, to uh, say no to sin. Be like Daniel. The Bible says Daniel determined in his heart he would not defile himself with the, uh, um, uh, the king's meat because the meat had been offered to idols. I'm not preaching dietary law here. I would never do that because I'm preaching grace. But back in the days of the, uh, of, the, of the law, when Daniel and the children were in Babylonian captivity, the king tried to redirect their, their mindset by uh, trying to make them eat uh, meat that had been offered to idols and drink wine that had been offered to idols. And Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, Hananiah, Hananiah Mishael, and Azariah, they said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And Daniel, the Bible says in Daniel 1.8, he determined in his heart he would not defile himself with the king's meat. You have to have that determination uh, in, your, in your inner man that you're not going to defile yourselves with the things of the world, those things that you once enjoy, enjoy doing and in some cases would still like to do, but because you're walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, you say no to sin and the Lord will strengthen you to do so. All right, God bless you, my beloved. This is Minister S. N. Crockett Jr. with the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel. I came to you today from Romans chapter 6. There's justification. That means to be made just in God's sight through Jesus Christ. And this is sanctification. To walk like we've been made uh, just uh, right in God's sight. And then there's going to be glorification. That's when we will be finally redeemed. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up. Hard puzzle uh, with them uh, to, uh, to meet the Lord in the air. God bless you, my beloved. We shall ever be with the Lord. God bless you, my beloved.